if there is a war between the West and the Muslim world, and this is what it is, right? Then oil is going to get shut off. Gas is going to get shut off. That's when the shit is really going to hit the fan, okay? Because what's happened in Israel is not a war on Palestinians. Should we talk about this? It's not a war on Palestinians. It's a war on Islam, okay? Because there are factions that are in Israel that want to create the greater Levant, right? They want a greater Israel in all of Levant, right? So what they need to do is they've been slowly ethnically cleansing the region of Palestinians. They're having a fucking hard time with it, right? Not as much as they want to. <laughs> don't repeat. They don't want to go there, right? But what Israel wants to do, the Alaska Mosque is huge because there's a faction in Israel that is acquiring power now that wants to build the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount, right now, from what I understand, the land, the, the Muslims have the Alaska Mosque on top and the Jews go under the Alaska Mosque in the tunnels and that's their thing with the La with the Temple Mount, right? <laughs> Stab you. What the the Temple Mount, right? Now the Alaska Mosque is the for one understand the third holiest site in all of Islam. Not just for Sunni, not just for Shia, but for both, for Sunni and Shia, right? Hamas is mainly a Saudi Arabia, Qatar, um, and Israel supported institution, believe it or not. Hezbollah in Lebanon is mainly a Syria, Lebanon, Iran supported institution, okay? But all of them agree right now that the plan that they have to destroy the Alaska Mosque will be a full-on attack on Islam. And if that happens, uh, <laughs> literally the world completely changes we're in a holy war and this is the build-up to a holy war by the way in the western world there are a lot of evangelical christian zionists as well as evangelical christians that they want to uh, see this come about the evangelicals believe that when this holy war breaks out in the Middle East, then we will, you know, we'll go into a nuclear war, there'll be Armageddon, and we see the second coming of Christ, right? The Zionists want this to happen because they want the greater Israel to be built, right? On the former God promised land of Israel, whatever the, whatever that means, right? And that, that takes parts of Syria, parts of Saudi Arabia, parts of Iraq, all of Palestine, right? the that's what the zionists want the hardcore zionist uh, jewish the this the section that believes that the messiah will come only when um, the true messiah not not christian jesus but the the coming of their god <laughs> whatever you want to call it right the apologies about brutalizing some of this mythology right uh will only come about there's two of them i believe one of them believe that the messiah will come when israel is destroyed the other believes that the messiah come when greater israel is installed there's other factions and i read this a long time ago this one this one's i'm to a certain degree leaning towards that I have leaned, it's always been in my mind. I don't know if I want to say I'm leaning towards that, but it's always been on my mind that the true promised land to the Israelites was not Israel, but North America, right? And 
the true uh, land of Israel will be established when nuclear war comes to the Middle East, when the yellow skins from the East come into the Middle East, and a nuclear war will happen, and the true promised land will be North America. So there's a lot of different mythologies all over the place talking about uh, talking about where uh, where this is all going, right? We're calling it World War Three. We're calling it World War Three. There's multiple factions involved in this, and there's multiple reasons why this is happening. There's the economic aspect of it, where the permanent war state requires war to maintain their economies right the economies of the western world are collapsing and there's civil unrest all over the place so one way to distract the citizens of different nations where their economy is completely collapsed is to create external conflict that way people don't go hey our leaders are bad we're at war everyone come together which is exactly what just happened in israel right Sharon was in danger of losing power and being arrested and thrown in jail, right? So what happens here? War breaks out, right? Now, I don't know which side of the spectrum people lie in where they say, oh, the war in Israel, what happened with Hamas was a complete surprise or it was, it was actually an Israeli operation. But one thing we do know that when israel comes out and says that this is a 9 11 event i agree with them it is a 9 11 event because 9 11 was definitely not 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 controlled by a guy on dialysis machine in a cave in afghanistan with 19 arabs that couldn't even fly a fucking kite that took planes and flew them into uh the world trade centers right uh, and the wars that were brought on for 20 20 years since then right they were all based on lies bullshit propaganda fed to the western population up the fucking yin yang with believe it or not majority of western world like a lot of people during that time believed the bullshit that was being fed to them in after 9 11 right really i got into discussion with a lot of people so right now people don't understand there is a fog of war right there's a complete fog of war happening here so we can't believe anything you we know now that it was complete bullshit that 40 baby heads were chopped off right it was just like incubator incubator babies in iraq it's like yellow cake in iraq it's like iran's building a nuclear weapon they're two days away from it and all that bullshit right so there's so much propaganda coming out of here. How much propaganda is coming out of the Palestinian regions, uh, Gaza regions? We don't know yet, right? But there is definitely some. But just looking at this, you know that if even Israel's come out and said it, that they're bombing, they're flattening areas. If you look at the footage, there are areas of blocks of buildings just completely flattened, right? And if you want to know what that implies, if you want to know what that implies, apologies if I'm not reading the chat. If you want to know what that implies, this is what it, what it implies. If you go and Israel telling all Gazans to, they have to leave northern Gaza and go south, right? And Egypt said, no, we can't have it coming in. Arab countries have said, no, we're not going to accept any of the refugees because they, Israel is trying to do another ethnic cleansing, right? The way... The ethnic cleansing was done in 1948 right and for multiple decades after that with the way the ethnic cleansing is going on in the west bank right now right so there's a multi-decade process of ethnically cleansing the region of palestinians and it's coming to heads right now right keep in mind that atrocities are committed on both sides but one side has been, co been committing atrocities for a little bit longer than the other side and if you just look at the numbers, the data of the number of people that have died from one side relative to the other side, then you get a feel for how uh, sort of lopsided some of this battle has been, right? Some of this agenda of centralized power and those that wants to inst instigate fear and control over humanity, right? 
But if you take what is happening, what Israel has said for Gaza to do, right? Apologies again if I'm not reading the chat. I'm going to, I'm going to get this off my chest and just lay the foundation for it and we'll deal with the nitty gritty of it. If you go to the United Nations, genocide prevention and the responsibility to protect, right? And uh, here, I'll provide the link in the chat on our, um, on, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, where is it? Da -da -da. Oh, here we go. Here's the link. Here's the UN link, right? Boink. Here's the link for the gang on Rumble. Boink. And here's the link for the gang on, oh, this is done. Boink. Here's a link for the gang on Twitch. Okay, so if you go to this website, United Nations Genocide Prevention and the, Pre and the Responsibility to Protect, right? And then you look at the sort of the table of contents. There's, there's genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and ethnic cleansing. We're just going to look at the genocide. It's got a little history here, blah, 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 blah. And then if you read the, uh, boop, if you read the, the, what they, what the definition of genocide is, okay? And and if you click on this, this that link right there, it takes you to, to the PDF of, you know, genocide and whatnot. And if you read Act 2 of the genocide, the preamble or whatever they came up with, right? Act 2 says this, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part, in a national, ethical, racial, or religious group as such. A, killing members of the group. B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to the members of the group. C, deliberately inflicting uh, on the group conditions of life calculated um, to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D, imposing measures intended to prevent the birth births within the group e forcibly transferring children of the group to another group okay now if you go to the the definition of ethnic cleansing in the table there okay and read their definition of ethnic cleansing right if you go down to the last paragraph right because they they're saying they don't really have, when you read the ethnic cleansing part, they're saying they really don't have a true definition of ethnic cleansing, right? But the last paragraph states this. The, here, you know what? Let me make this bigger so I can read it more easily. Doink. Doink. Oh, look at that, making it bigger. Nice. As uh, bah, 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 I'm just reading the last paragraph here because I don't want to spend too much time on here. The commission of experts added that these practices can, quote, constitute crimes against humanity and can be assimilated uh, assimilated to specific war crimes furthermore such acts could also fall within the meaning of the genocide convention okay so ethnic cleansing can be categorized as genocide based on certain criteria and they have to get together and decide on that criteria or whatever's going on right some people would say well you could say that different nations want to eliminate the land of Jews of Israel that's what Israel feeds people that they're in danger of being ethnically cleansed from the region they, that's genocide so they make you know we're committing Israel's basically saying we're gonna commit genocide until before they commit genocide on us right certain other people saying well we're gonna keep on fighting back because we're being genocided right like really it's that insane so right now, if you want to sort of appreciate the game at play, right? Uh, appreciate the game at play. For those of you who've been following this, you'll have an appreciation for some of these little, little things I'm going to mention. Okay. The United Nations has stated that Israel has to remove all the settlements from Palestinian land. And Israel's got, I don't know how many settlements they have, hundreds, thousands of settlements in on Palestinian land right now. 
And the United Nations has stated that all of those are illegal. Israel has to stop building settlements and has to disband all the settlements and take them all back. That's officially what the United Nations says. Now, the United Nations is in um, controlled by the United States in large part by the Western world. However, that's changing right now, right, because of the BRICS nations. So this is sort of a last ditch effort for Israel or for the West to try to cleanse the region as much as much territory as they can before the power shifts from Western control of the United Nations to BRICS nations and the rest of the world, which is basically 80% of the world, right? The reason they're trying to do this is because when that happens, what's been stated in the United Nations, if it still exists by the time this takes place, they will start enforcing those mandates that they've already agreed upon, right? Without the United States being able to veto it, right? So there's sort of a time crunch right now for some of the actions that need to be taken by certain factions to get a better position before they go to the table to negotiate, right? So that's one of the reasons that we're seeing the shit hit the fan slowly, right? Israel, the West kept on saying that Iran was behind Hamas. Now that's died down because Iran was not behind Hamas. It was because they're trying to start a war with Iran. In the West, they've been saying, oh, one of the reasons that this happened was because the United States gave Iran $6 billion. Well, first of all, they didn't give Iran $6 billion. Those are assets that the West had frozen, Iranian assets, Iranian money that the West had frozen, stolen, right? And they agreed to give it back, but now it's still frozen. So Iran didn't really get that $6 billion that Fuhuha, corporate propaganda in the West has been saying that that's the reason that this attack happened. You should also appreciate that there's no way this attack would have happened without someone inside Israel or institutions inside Israel knowing that it was going to happen, including the United States, because, again, as Israel has stated, this was another 9-11 event. This was like Pearl Harbor. They knew it was going to happen. Right? It was no, they knew it was going to happen. Who was behind it? That's a good question. Everyone knows now that Hamas was really put into power by Israel. You should also know, some people say they've lost control of Hamas, so you can't hold Hamas responsible, okay? But you should also appreciate that Israel was also supporting ISIS that was fighting against Syria, and Hamas was on the side of ISIS. Hamas was on the side of ISIS. So if Hamas was fighting against the Syrian government on the side of ISIS, Israel was supporting the is ISIS fighters, fanatics, Islamic fanatics. What a trippy thing, right? So Hamas and Israel were actually allies in their opposition in their war against Syria. Turkey was also fighting Syria, so is the United States and the UK, right? They lost that because Russia stepped in, okay? Because Russia stepped in. So right now we're seeing a major ethnic cleansing, and it is ethnic cleansing, taking place because two factions that were allies in their war against Syria are now at odds against each other, right? Supposedly, Saudi Arabia and Israel were in talks with the United States to normalize relations. Some people are saying this happened because Hamas couldn't allow that to happen. Because if that happened, Palestinians would have been thrown out. Right? They wouldn't. They wouldn't have got anything. Right? Hezbollah has already stated that if Israel is planning on committing genocide. In Gaza, okay, then, oh, thank you, Elder God. I wasn't following the chat. <laughs> Seriously. If Israel is going to commit genocide on Gaza, Hezbollah is going to get involved, right? Hezbollah is going to get involved. 
Iran has said that they will not stand idly by while genocide is being committed. Egypt is already moving forces to the border. They've said they're not going to open the border. Okay. Gazans, some Gazans that are fleeing from the north to the south are being bombarded, killed. If you know anything about the Iraq war in the first Iraq war with Kuwait, you'll know something about the highway of death. Attacking retreating forces is a war crime. Attacking civilians that are leaving war-torn or war regions is beyond that. Okay. So Russia has already come out and said what Israel is doing is wrong compared to letting what happened in Stalingrad. Right? China has already come out and said what they are doing is wrong. Okay. How could they try to ethnically cleanse a whole region? Okay. Saudi Arabia has cut ties, not cut ties, but no longer negotiating with Israel for normalizing relations. Gold is up in the last week, up about $120. In just five days or so jump sixty dollars on friday none of the arab countries has said not even turkey has said that they will accept the palestinian refugees so that's where we are right now that's where we are right now number of people have come out that journalists have come out and talking about history and how things have come to be to where they are. And uh, <laughs> it's extremely, extremely <laughs> fragile. It could blow at any moment. It could blow at any moment. I saw Plutonic Pluralist. Uh, apologies if I didn't read the chat. Uh, Chicho, is your mic? Oh, the sound. Is it bad? Is it low? Test, test. Did it go down? Volume is a bit low. Okay, let me do a little unplug and replug. How long has it been low? Test, test. Test, test. Is that better? That should be better. Da, 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 da. It's low for people, yeah. Audible, but low. 10 minutes, for about 10 minutes. Oh, that's unfortunate. So bad, so sad. Much better, yes. Oh, sorry, gang. I should have kept my eyes on the thing. What a time for it to do that. Poop, good. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thanks. My apologies, gang. I should have kept my eyes on the chat. There's just so much going on. I needed to get it out. Okay. Now it's uh, Gerald Sarantis style. No, no, it's okay. Okay, no, man. But we could still hear everything. Uh, just was quieter. No problem. Okay. Could still hear the most part, though. Okay. Oh, sorry, gang. It was all right for headphone users. Who could hear? Okay. Nicholas Chicho. It was still audible, so it's not lost. Okay, cool, cool, good. Pooper, scooper, what a time. I gotta keep my uh, eyes on that. Uh, the reason I wasn't reading the chat is because there's so much going on, right? So much going on. So that's where we stand right now. And outside, I don't know if you can hear it, they're doing construction again, so they're cutting things. The craziness, craziness. Anonymous, man. Should the Geneva Convention apply to a Occupy territory like Gaza that is te uh, technically not a country. Uh, what do you mean, uh, anonymous man? Uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity, ethnic cleansing, genocide. They don't necessarily apply apply to just countries. They apply to people. Okay, they apply to people. Right? They apply to people. And... 
according to the United Nations, Israel has to remove all the settlements. That's set in stone, right? Unless there's renegotiation, right? Unless there's renegotiation, right? And keep in mind, by the way, gang, Israel in the last few months was helping Azerbaijan cleanse nagorno karabakh of Armenians. 120,000, 130,000 Armenians have been on the march to go to Armenia because Israel and Azerbaijan and Turkey were ethnically cleansing the region. So if you consider this, Israel in the last few months is involved in two ethnic cleansings, right? Two ethnic cleansings. For a little country right there, that's a lot of ethnic cleansing that this country has been involved in. Okay. And it should be noted that Israel does not recognize the Armenian genocide, the first genocide of the 20th century. And some would argue that the ethnic cleansing being done in nagorno karabakh is could be the first largest ethnic cleansing of the 20th century, followed by Palestine. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I was going to answer this. Um, so, Plutonic Plurals ask Should Egypt allow Palestinians to come into Egypt? And Bertie here says, uh, Why do Muslim countries not let fling Palestinians in? Didn't Egypt have war with Israel in the past? Here, here's the reason these countries have to also maintain their economies, make sure they have control, you know, of crime, right? Make sure that they can feed all these refugees coming into their countries, right? If you think about it, in 1948 and decades after that, they had the great, what was it called the Nakba? Palestinian refugees being flooded into their nations, into Jordan, into Syria, into Egypt. There's a lot of refugees and a lot of the people, 80% or so, 70% or so. And by the way, 50% of people in Gaza, human beings in Gaza are children, right? Average age in Gaza is 17 years old, right? 2.2 million people or so. So in 1948, right, those are great marches, Israel, Israelis, Jews, I don't know, what do you call it? Great cleansing of Palestinians from that region and all those countries took in these refugees and there's major refugee camps in all of these countries of Palestinians how, did that help the situation at all did that help the situation at all that how many decades later seven decades later you, the world Israel and the United States are expecting these countries to take in all of these refugees because Israel wants to cleanse the re, uh, region of Palestinians Remember, when the Western world went into Iraq, Syria took in 2 million Iraqi refugees or so. That's a huge economic burden on a country, right? Look at the shitstorm happening right now with all of Europe, the richest place in the world, the, the garden relative to the jungle, right? As the European leaders would like to call it. There's a few million refugees in all of Europe. All of Europe. And the shit is hitting the fan, right? The shit is hitting the fan, right? What are you going to do about it, right? Just because a nation says, I want to ethnically cleanse the region, then all the neighboring countries have to take those people in, right? Doesn't really make sense. Doesn't really make sense. First time chat, Vaughn, you and in sudden, I don't know what that means. Six day war, Pluton war. Rich Muslim countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia don't want refugees who could destabilize their societies and rule. Yeah, and most of these monarchies and kingdoms and stuff, they don't really represent the people, right? Like Saudi Arabia, for decades, it was installed by the West. Same with Kuwait. I mean, jeez. Kuwait, the deal Kuwait had during the first Gulf War was 
all their royalty flew over to Europe and the United States and Europe UK and the United States said oh yeah we'll get Kuwait back for you but we want half of it half the revenues right so they're monarchies they're puppets they're kingdoms they don't really represent the people right hey is that what the Israelis want the Palestinian land da, 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 da. Nicholas Chicho thanks for the stream peace chat and mods hope to be back soon awesome Nicholas thank you very much I hope you have a fantastic week fantastic week first time chat Dalf they're trying to build a prison for me and you to live in right <laughs> garbage truck dancing vigil it's someone doing cutting or something this construction it's crazy it's crazy uh birdie here uh so the neighboring countries are essentially saying we uh where'd it go are essentially saying we shouldn't take them in as this shouldn't be happening in large part and you can't like just like there are homeless in our city I'm pretty sure if you live in the Western world or homeless near you can you just open your doors and let the homeless into your house and just start feeding giving shelter to all, all the homeless it just doesn't work it doesn't work right it doesn't work is one of my windows open can you guys hear the sound Nah, it doesn't look like it's too loud. Da, 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 da. Behind their empty walls, my bad. <laughs> Dalf. That seems ha. Uh, I'm at a cafe and a garbage truck was uh, stuck in traffic. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, Ryan MC. Iran is watching what's happening very closely. Indeed. 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 And by the way, the attack on Armenia, nagorno karabakh and the little piece of land there that connects Turkey and Azerbaijan that Azerbaijan says we want, Turkey says we want, Iran has said you ain't going to get it. Azerbaijan is funded by Israel because, because it is also an attack on Iran, and that is not lost to Iran. Iran knows this, that uh, Israel just attacked Iran in the north, destabilized northern Iran. The border right that is not lost to iran